I love how the way they keep sending these things, they just look like treasure when they show up in this silver wrapping. Let's complete our Bobo setup. Well, this is what I've been waiting for. This is the BD3 charging dock. This charges up to three Bobo VR new 10K milliamp hour battery packs. You do have to get your own power brick. So I did get this Anchor 100 watt one. Guess we got to open that too now. 100 watts the max you can use for this thing. Supposedly it can do 30 watts each charging through the bottom where it can only do 15 watts each from the top. This is a beastly power brick. I don't remember what exactly. I feel like it was like 40 bucks or something. That was way too much. It is beefy though. It feels it. Pop down to USB type C's and a type A. Let's check this thing out. It says right there, max 100 watt. Tells you this is authentic, this is real, and it's powerful. I'm glad now that I bought a black brick to go with this. Books and crap, we'll probably look at that later. The dock itself, pretty light, not surprising. They do send one of their sticky pads, and now the sticky pad is actually Bobo VR branded. The slip pad is pretty small, although I guess when you look at this thing, wow, it's got like vents and everything in it. This is running a lot of power, so it probably has to stay cool. But the surface area that actually hits your desk is much smaller than the whole thing, so this pad's just gonna sit right in the middle of that. Nice. Screen on the front. Ooh, yeah, it does not mess around with the magnets on there. Oh, it can't quite, can't quite do a throw in, but you come anywhere near and it's gonna bring itself right to the spot. All right, let me get an actual extension cord directly plugged into an outlet because we need to make sure we have the right amount of power going to this. All right, let's see what the screen tells us with our first plug in here lights up. It looks just like the one on the side of the S3 Pro you're probably used to. So if I pop just one on there, it's telling me that one is charging. Okay. So it, you see it slowly juice up to 30 watts or near it. Looks like it's holding about 27, 28. And then it shows you how much percentage is on there. So what does it communicate? If we add a second, well, it's, it's turning up the power here. So now I guess it's gonna tell us total watts that it's charging and both of them show they're flashing on themselves. So now it's still communicating to us. The front one is 7%, but the dock's using 56 watts. We put a third one on. Boy, there's a lot of juice running to this thing. This is kind of concerning to me. So now it's telling us 14% is what the third one is. You can see the little dot lights up. Okay, that is just the beginning. I don't want those to get charged. I'm actually gonna redrain those. We're gonna take us to the other studio where I can set a camera on it for hours at a time. We're gonna run all three. We're gonna see what it takes, see how fast it charges them. We got a lot of testing to do. We gotta test how it's gonna work now that we have all these to swap off. What it's like if you accidentally plug this in something else. What's it like if you use the stock one that comes with the power brick that comes with the Quest, cause that's only 18 watts. Like, is this even worth it with that? We'll be back with a whole whole lot of testing and reports for you. We're back early. It's only been two days so far and we ran into an issue. The anchor power brick that I bought says it does 100 watts and yet so far we have not been able to get it to run up to 100 watts even with three completely dead batteries. So when you first put them all on, it tells you how many watts it's producing. And this is the pattern I've seen so far. I've got this plugged in directly to an outlet. I brought over a 1900 watt extension cord just to make sure it wasn't this. And then I even plugged it directly into the wall when I did testing in my studio. And same thing, 6970 was the most we're seeing with that one. I went over to Amazon and next day had a bunch of different power bricks so we can try some different ones and see if we can get this thing close to 100 watts because so far the 70 took about three hours to charge three from dead and we never got it above 70. And then of course, as the batteries get more full, it tapers down the wattage to slowly fill them the rest of the way. So let's check out a few more of these and see if we can get some better results. I got this Tobin one. I mean, some knockoff random piece of crap, but I got it because it says it's 100 watts. It doesn't have any USB-C ports. Honestly, I think this is actually like a laptop charger is what this is, but it's rated for 100 and it has its own cable. So I was like, okay, this thing has to work. Okay, that one seems to be peaking out at 85, 86. Strangely working better than the anchor. So maybe that anchor power brick I got is not gonna end up being my final recommendation. Don't try this one at home. I got a 128 watt one. Technically though, this one, like the anchor, I don't believe comes with its own cable. So we will be using a 100 watt rated cable still from Bobo. So in theory, we shouldn't see it go above 100. So far, 86 is the number to beat. Interestingly, that one's only running 61 to 62. I got one that doesn't even have a freaking brand name. This one is also 100 watts, although I got even less faith in this one, to be honest with you. It really feels cheap in hand. That one made a nice sparking sound. Hopefully that's a good thing. Back to the 100 watt Bobo cable. Top port. Oh no. Well, 
Model F. Okay, 85 watts is what I've got to continue the testing for the next couple days. It's supposed to use a 100 watt charger because it's supposed to max out at 30 is what each can take in the bottom. 30 watts a piece, 90 total. They'll give you a 100 watt cable and supposedly with a 100 watt brick, then you should be able to see it near 90. So far, the only one that has come close, and I'm guessing that is 85, I mean 86. That's close enough that I'd say it's probably maxing out. This Tobin one is what I'm gonna be doing the next round of testing on to see how long it took to charge. We found with the anchor in the correct port with it running 69 to 70, took about three hours. Next round is gonna be with this one near the max of 90 watts, and then we'll be back with all of our final thoughts. After a long week of some very sleepless nights, I've spent multiple, multiple times recharging this dock, learning everything about it, and the really tricky part about them, so to save weight on these, the reason that they're not as heavy as two of the old batteries, one thing they took out was the output USB-C bit. So it used to be with the old batteries, if you were in a pinch, you could take one of them, you could plug in the USB-C USB to your phone, and you could charge your phone from them. These no longer have that, which meant if I wanted to fully drain one of these, where I could have just plugged into something before, I was now running them all three hours at a time. So I spent a lot of time in VR games this week to be able to run this thing through multiple cycles. Worth it. Ultimately, the Tobin one was the winner. It was the only one that ever got near 90 watts. Usually 85, 86 is what it would run at. Two hours, three dead batteries, charge all three of them in two hours, which is fast, especially considering it takes three hours to drain one, even if you're doing like mixed reality on the headset. Frankly, I'll mention like the anchor charging brick. It would work for most people because most of you don't need three batteries to charge up in two hours. Like this would be if I had two two quests running constantly and I needed this one dock to charge all of them, it could do it. But ultimately, I mean, you can even run some of your ones you really shouldn't. This is a Quest 2 10 watt brick and we're charging all three off of eight or nine watts. But if you're someone who's gonna leave this dock sitting somewhere for days and run it that way, technically they'll charge up slowly over time. Some people might argue that they'll actually make your batteries last longer because they're really slow charging. If you happen to have a Quest Pro charger, which is adaptive up to 45 watts, you see it running at about 32 to 36 total off that. But ultimately, if you want the best, highest, fastest one, apparently a 100 watt laptop charger, is what it's taking for me to get that result. Screen on here relays different things. Obviously, watts is what we've been talking about a lot, but it also tells you which battery is the closest to being full with the indicator light, and then it gives you the exact percentage it's at. So it switches back and forth between telling you that and the total watts of use. So the idea there is that if you're like, oh man, my battery's dying and I need to grab another one and the three are charging and one of them's closer, you grab that one, swap it out. So right now, when the batteries are the closest to dead, you're gonna see the highest watts, the fastest charging, and then you'll see it taper down, which was actually kind of helpful sometimes for me in testing. I don't think the average user is gonna really need that, but like I had a podcast that I had to do at 5.30, I could see that it was down to like seven watts of charging at the time. And so I knew they were all close. They all had their fourth light blinking. And it was like the minute I needed to be on it, they all got done. I was able to unplug it, switch my camera back. And so it kind of helps you to be able to see, but for the most part, especially since I've had the old docks forever, you know that you just have the batteries there. You know, they might be there overnight. They might be there for days. They're usually always ready. You're not like sitting, waiting on one to play. So that's where ultimately I like the dock. I'm going to be using it. It's going to have all my batteries charged. I will miss the functionality of being able to charge other stuff through the USB-C. You could have that option. It's kind of a janky way to do it, but you could do this unplug this and plug this into whatever you want to charge something USB-C still. So there's a way around it. Or if you have one of the upgrade kits like I do, I could literally just not install this on a headset and have this sitting around to do that exact function. It's kind of unnecessary, but I know Nat uses those battery packs to charge her phone all the time. Doc does its job. It's 40 bucks without a battery. Technically, last I checked, there was still that 5% pre-order code. I'll leave that in a link in the description down below. The price seems good, but it doesn't include a battery like the old one did. So I am going to say as one of the cons, I do feel like I wish there was a bundle for a little bit better of a price with a dock and a battery that may be coming. But I feel like a lot of people out there who have the S3 Pro, they have one battery and they're like, oh, do I spend 80 bucks on a battery and a dock or do I just buy another battery and always charge it through the top? They're probably gonna opt for that. The dock is convenient. I like the way it looks. I like the way it works, but I think that it's gonna prevent some people from buying it because of that. Another thing, $40 doesn't seem like too much for it, but I feel like the main complaint I get about the S3 Pro, people keep saying over-engineered. Like they're saying, oh, this screen wasn't necessary. The whole thing has become a little heavy, a little bulky because of everything they added. People don't use the fan. So they feel like they're paying 
too much because it wasn't all things they wanted. There might be some people that kind of say the same thing about this dock. Like, do you need to know what watts a dock is charging at? Do you need to know the exact percentage the battery's at? Especially when the batteries have the four lights on there that show you, oh, well, it's somewhere between 75 and 100, or it's somewhere between 25 and 50. I feel like that over-engineered phrase might make its way over to this dock as well. And then of course, the fact that you gotta find your own power brick and the fact that I had this much of a struggle to find one that gave me the max charging, will also probably land in cons for most people because it's kind of annoying. I end up with a laptop charger of all things. And when it comes down to it, when I put it in my home somewhere and I'm not constantly waiting on batteries, I might just use the anchor brick in their cable because I trust the anchor brand a little bit more. I trust their cable more. This is working. I shouldn't knock it too much, but I don't know this brand name and I'm already worried enough with all the electronics I have in my house about some surge protector blowing up or something. For the pros, I mean, first of all, I'm gonna say I'm using it from now on. I like the convenience, I like the look of it, especially because I'm gonna put this on my entertainment center and I think it'll look nice being in there with those slots. I'll have this on one side and the old Bobo's on the other because I still use those too. The screen does make it look like it's something technologically cool and advanced, so I think it adds to that effect, even if it may not be something you hardly ever need to look at. Three batteries does mean the possibility of running two Quest 3s simultaneously with unlimited battery. We're going to find out more when we go and install this. So there'll be a review coming on this soon, but we need to install that on our old M3 or even on the S3 Mini are the options to make all that work. I've had unlimited playtime. I've never had to worry about it. And the nice thing too, what really happens is like, let's say you finish a play session. You don't think about the fact that this battery was nearly dead. Your headset was about dead and you just left it sitting there. Any other battery strap, you'd be like, crap, this is completely dead. I have to wait for the, this to charge. I gotta wait for the headset to charge before I can play. With this, you literally, even if this thing's at 0%, you just swap on a new battery and you're good to play. And that's the convenience the dock gives you that matters to me for that. But I'm not gonna say this isn't a cheap investment. I mean, you're talking 90 for the strap. If you buy the dock, you're up to 130 and then you buy two more batteries I mean, you're pushing over $200 altogether if you want this full setup that I'm rocking. So it is not cheap, but with the Quest 3 being $500, I feel like people are a little more willing to invest more money in it. There'll be links to everything from Bobo VR if you want anything from them. I will be continuing, of course, to review other head straps, other companies telling you how those work and my thoughts on them. I know a lot of you have been waiting on the Kiwi one, but I'm trying to figure out everything about it because it's giving me some trouble. I'm trying to figure out exactly why so I can give you a good answer on that. Uh, and then if it's solved or not by using their charging dock with it, because it seems to be. But that's for another video. There'll be links down below. There was also a teaser dropped by Bobo this morning. There is more products coming <laughs> this next quarter. And in the picture, you can try to pick out and see if you can tell what they're there. I think on the screen, it'll be pretty easy to at least find a couple of them. So more is coming from them. More reviews are coming from them about us. We'll have this one, and then we're gonna do a test with both the Quest once that's installed, get back to you with all of that. So once again, the absolute hugest thank you to all of you. It's because of all of you that we get to do all of these cool tests, all these, we get to learn all this stuff about it. I am realizing that I need to invest in some more electrical testing equipment though, because I really wanted to have some other cables that we could like see the Watson stuff running. So if any of you out there are electricians and you have some recommendations of what it takes to really put these things through their full paces, I'd be interested to know. It's something I'm learning too. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you in another reality.